One food item that Bangalore is known for is the masal dosa. Crisp on the outside, usually because it's cooked in ghee. And it also has a flavor packed filling which is made with potatoes. And in Bangalore, you can find a shop serving masal dosa literally in any corner. Many such shops come and go, but not a single one can even think of surviving for more than a hundred years. Especially in a country like India, which has gone through so much over the past hundred years. One such company that has not only been able to survive but also thrive is MTR. MTR is a household name when it comes to food and snacks. But in this video, I want to talk about MTR and the strategies that they used in order to stay on top for so long. And since I'm talking about MTR, it would be a shame not to go there in order to show you the food and snacks. So last week, I went there for research purposes only. Yeah, only for research, nothing else. <laughs> The story of MTR revolves around three brothers who left their small town in Udupi in order to come to the bigger city, which is Bangalore. They went from being cooks in a restaurant to eventually having their own and in essence creating opportunities for themselves after moving to the bigger city. Though the company itself is very old and very traditional, the restaurants have a very different feel. Which brings me to the first strategy that they used which is the ability to reinvent themselves. If you decide to become very rigid and just decide that you won't change with the changing times, there is a very high chance that both you and your business won't do very well. So adaptability for any business is very important, whether that be it inventing the rava idli back in 1977 when there was a shortage of rice and it was actually the period of emergency in India when there were not enough raw materials in order to make regular idlis and that's when they invented the rava idli or whether that be it using modern machinery in order to create a standardized product which would later be exported to other countries all over the world. MTR has been able to reinvent itself from time to time but at the same time has been able to maintain its originality and by doing this they are able to cater to a wide range of people and at the same time cater to different types of people. In Bangalore they essentially have two brands. One is the original MTR which started a hundred years ago and the second one is the rebranded version of MTR which is called MTR 1924 and has outlets all across Bangalore. The original MTR is located near La which opened back in 1924 and as soon as you enter you literally feel like you have gone back in time. The crowd that comes there is usually the older generation who usually wake up at 5am and go for their morning walks after which they come to MTR and drink their morning coffee and continue talking with each other. But my point being that they were able to reinvent themselves but at the same time they were able to maintain and retain their older customers. Old customers both literally and figuratively. <laughs> MTR restaurants are only there in Karnataka but you might have heard about MTR which is the packaged foods which is also known as MTR foods. This also brings me to the second strategy that they used which is to have packaged food which essentially increases the reach of the brand and because of this single decision of having packaged food you are able to find MTR foods and MTR snacks in any supermarket in any nook and cranny of India. And the brilliant thing is that they are able to take a dish and break down all the elements and all the components of that dish and sell it to you. Let's just take a plate of idli that you would eat with sambar and chutney for example. MTR has the idli mix with which you can make the idli. MTR has also the sambar powder and all the other condiments and spices with which you can make the sambar. They also have the chutney powder or the chutney mix with which you can make the chutney. So in essence, you can literally recreate all the food that they offer at home. In India, they also had the first more advantage which is doing something new in an industry which is the packaged food industry where they were able to create these packets and sell it all across the country and all across the world where they even sold their products to other countries like Singapore, countries like Australia and other Asian and Pacific countries. Another time, they also used modern machinery with the help of which they were 
are able to create economies of scale which basically means because of the scale and because of the quantities that they were producing the cost per unit was decreasing and the last thing that i want to talk about is the importance of having goodwill and importance of having a really good brand name and a really good reputation in the market by the mid 2000s mtr was a multi million dollar company but at the same time it was also a family run business and because of the exponential growth that it had witnessed the family was finding it difficult in order to manage the entire show mainly because of the size that the company had grown into and that is exactly when in 2007 a norwegian conglomerate by the name of orkla bought out mtr foods for a whopping 100 million us dollars 100 million <laughs> god damn which basically meant orkla would take over the entire production of mtr foods from the distribution to even creating the product and because of their expertise in distribution they would ensure that this product would reach newer markets which the family alone could not have done at the end of the day the reason why mtr is able to survive for a 100 years is because it stuck to its core competency the core competency of providing yummy indian food and at the same time focusing and aiming to make it more convenient just like how we have instant noodles they also tried to make or not tried they actually made like instant idli and instant dosas by doing this they were also able to appeal to a wide range of customers and because of the quality of their products were also able to increase or improve the brand image and improve the goodwill this is the main reason why this norwegian company paid 100 million dollars for mtr foods so yeah i just got done visiting both the mtrs and i just want to share my experience of the two mtrs with you but before that i also want to talk about the weather in bangalore today and as of today it's 18 degrees celsius and it's december and it's almost christmas in bangalore where i need to wear a sweater and it's like the perfect weather to eat like a hot dosa i just want to compare both the mtrs the original mtr and the mtr 1924 and as soon as i walked into the original mtr it literally felt like i went back in time and overall it just felt more homely where i just felt like i was with my family going out for breakfast and i could literally see that all around me where there were people across me like these old people okay they're like who don't even have teeth they're like eating this dosa dipping it in sambar and all so yeah that was like a really nice atmosphere i would say and it was also very crowded i reached there by around 6:30 and by the time i reached there it was already really crowded and there were people all around swarming the entire restaurant and people outside were sitting chatting reading the newspaper which is a rare sight to see these days and in terms of food and the dosa alone honestly it was pretty tasty where because it was cooked in ghee and the ingredients that they used was also really fresh in that sense it was really tasty in terms of price the dosa over there is 100 rupees which is almost double of what you can expect in a normal restaurant but the extra 50 is basically because of the brand name and also because of the crowd that it attracts where the older people have a lot of money to spend and are willing to spend the extra money so the goodwill of the brand also really impacts the product and the price of the product where they are able to charge double the amount and still have people waiting in line for it i also visited the kitchen where i got an opportunity to see how everything is made and how the cooks and the chefs operate and honestly it's so busy it's so jam packed and everybody is working like clockwork everybody is synchronized and even though it's so crowded nobody's bumping into each other which was really an amazing sight to see and the other thing i noticed is that how respectful they were being to the food where they don't allow you to wear any footwear and even the waiters around roam around barefoot the overall experience was pretty nice on the other hand the mtr 1924 has a completely different vibe firstly it opens at 8 am compared to the original mtr which opens at 5:30 am but the vibe is completely different where in the mtr 1924 I was literally the only one in the restaurant. If you were to ask me whether I would go there every day, the answer would probably be no. Mainly because it's an experience which is to be experienced once in a while and also the price of the dosa is double that of a uh, dosa in any other restaurant. So it's a nice experience and yeah. And the last thing is that in terms of calories, it's not the most calorie friendly where one masala dosa is around 600 calories and one coffee is around 100 calories. So my complete meal which was the masala dosa two coffees and an idli is around 1000 calories and as a result I'm trying to burn it off by cycling to and from MTR <laughs>